Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will build something awesome, and that is a Compose multi-platform app, because that framework is now in alpha. That means we can use Compose to build UI for both Android and iOS. As you can see here, we will build something super simple, just a little increment counter, because there is still quite some setup involved, and I want to focus on that with this video, so that in future videos, I can build more complex apps with Com uh, Compose multi-platform and just refer to the setup video. So you can see on the left side, we have our app on the right side our iPhone app and if we click this button then we can increment this counter and the same on Apple so that is working perfectly fine and in this video you will see how you can build this UI with Jetpack Compose as well as all the other logic we have on this app which is then written in Kotlin. And just a quick reminder if you are a mobile developer looking for ways to turn your skill into money you will learn how to do this step by step in my new mobile freelance academy with a reproducible system and you'll not only get a big video portal of over 60 videos about freelancing but also join an exclusive discord community server where you can ask all your questions to me or other freelancers. So if you've been thinking to either earn a side income as a freelancer or even become a full-time consultant, then I will show you all the steps there. Now it's really the best chance to join because soon the early bird discount will expire and the price will rise by 70% again. So if that sounds good, click the first link in this video's description. To get started with this, we need to create a new Kotlin multi-platform app. So create a new project in Android Studio, select Kotlin multi-platform app here. If you don't have this option and you also never used KMM before, uh, then I want to refer to the video somewhere up here where I show you how you can set up KMM with Android Studio so you also have this option to create this Kotlin multi-platform app here. Let's click next. Um, then we need to give our app a name, which is simply, um, I'll call this Compose Multi-Platform Counter, for example. We can then click next. This is very similar to Android. It's actually the same. Um, uh, this is different from a normal Android project. Here we have an Android app module. We have an iOS app module and a shared module, which you will know if you know KMM. In this video, I will really only focus on Compose for KMM. Uh, in my other videos and also the one I linked above, I explain what all this means. We want to leave this iOS framework distribution at a uh, regular framework because with CocoaPods, um, there's more setup involved that also works with a multi-platform, of course, um, I mean Compose. So let's click finish and then I'll see you back when the project created. And there we go. I already get a little error here in Android Studio that um, Gradle complains about something and that is luckily easy to fix. Maybe you don't even get that um, because the issue in my case is just that I use Java 8 by default, I think, and or 1.8 and this new Gradle 8 requires Java 11 at least. So we want to go to Android Studio preferences. For me, that is command comma and then search for Gradle. There we go. And here for the Gradle JDK, we want to select the version 11 and then click OK. Go to File, Sync Project with Gradle Files. If there is no error for you, you can fully ignore this and go on after this Gradle Sync is successful, of course. So there we go. This is now just a very blank KMM project. By default in KMM, we share things like our business logic, our networking client, our database, but it wasn't really possible to share the UI since that's something very platform specific. However, with Compose Multi-Platform, we now have a framework to build our shared UI in Compose, which will also then kind of translate to iOS UI code. And to enable this Compose Multi-Platform Gradle plugin, we need quite some setup and we need quite some changes in our Gradle files. First of all, let's open this Gradle scripts um, block here. And we're going to open Gradle properties. Here, we first of all want to paste this. So we just define some of our important versions, the Kotlin version, Android Gradle plugin version, and the Compose version. And I'll also link all these things that I paste here down below in a gist that I created, um, where you can also find a step-by-step -step manual. So if in future you want to create a, a Compose multi-platform project, you just need to follow this gist to set up your project. The next step is then to also stay in this Gradle properties file and paste these two lines because we still need to opt in to some experimental APIs here for our uh, Compose multi-platform, but that's pretty much it. The next change we need is in our build.gradle KTS in the project file. Here we want to replace these plugins, so we don't want to specify the plugin versions here directly um, because we have the versions specified in our Gradle properties file. So we want to replace this whole block 
with these. So these are just the default. They were already included, but we now also have this uh, JetBrains Compose Gradle plugin, which we want to add here in our project file. But we not only need to add this plugin here in the build.gradle project file, but also in our shared and Android app file. So let's go in Android app, paste this here um, above without this apply uh, function and in the shared module in the shared Gradle file as well so that this uh, Compose multi-platform plugin is really applied everywhere in our project. Then staying in our build.gradle shared file, we need to scroll down where it says list of and it enumerates all these different iOS variants. Below this base name is equal to shared, we need to set is static to true because otherwise um, the shared module will not be found in Xcode in our iOS code base. And then the next thing is we need to add the actual um, runtime dependency or the actual real dependency for Compose multi-platform here in common main. So by getting after that, we simply open curly braces and we specify our dependencies um, right here. This won't be new to you if you are not new to uh, KMM. And here we can simply paste these right here. Um, you will notice that we can directly refer to Compose here, at least after we uh, synchronize Gradle, because this version and dependency comes from the um, Compose multi-platform Gradle plugin, which we also just included. If you also have some Android-specific uh, Compose dependencies, for example, the activity dependency, which you need in your Android main module, then you can also add these right here in this uh, simple sample here. We don't need that. The last thing we need to change, at least for a Gradle, is we need to go to settings Gradle because by default, this Compose multi-platform plugin won't be found. And for that, we need to add the proper repository so it can actually find it. That is a Maven repository, which you can simply paste here. And also under dependency re resolution management, that on the one hand. And on the other hand, we also need to now um, use our uh, actual Gradle plugins that we specified the versions for before in Gradle properties. We want to link these here inside of a separate plugins block. So first we just retrieve these different versions which we have here in uh, Gradle properties. So we have the Kotlin version, Android Gradle plugin and Compose multi-platform version. And we then simply apply all these plugins here. And now it's fine to synchronize our product and hopefully we don't get any errors because if we don't, then our setup is complete and correct. And that looks good. I don't get any uh, sync errors. So now we can start to write our UI code. And that is where the magic happens. Of course, all the setup is a bit annoying at the moment and maybe this gets uh, more simple in future. It's of course still an alpha, so there might be some issues at the moment and it might not be fully stable, but it's at least in a stage where you can start to try around with that, where you can start to learn it. And I assume if this advances to maybe beta or even stable, then we'll also have a separate option in Android Studio um, where we can easily create a Compose multi-platform project without needing all the setup. But having the setup once, you can fully um, explore the benefits of Compose multi-platform. Let's go to shared. That is where we want to put our UI code, which is now shared between Android and iOS. And here in common main, that is the place where it belongs. I will only have a very basic uh, file here. So in our um, root package, we want to create a file called app. And here we can now just use compose code as we know it from Android. So we can create a composable function called app. And since that is a very basic increment counter, we need some kind of state count by remember um, like this. And we refer to immutable state of, let's say we start at zero, alt enter. Um, and for some reason we can't import that here. We can also add the imports manually. So we can duplicate this, remember, import twice, once for set value and once for get value. And yes, then the error is gone. And then for the rest, let's just have a little box where we fill the whole size of our screen. So fill max size and we want to center our content. So content alignment is center. And in here, we are just going to display our very basic button where we have an on click lambda and we have some content, which is simply a text. And the text is count colon, and we pass our count state. Whoops. When we click on this button, we simply want to increment our count by one. And that is already our very basic UI. And our goal is now to take this app composable 
and share this with Android and iOS. So we only have this at this single place now, which is the whole idea of Compose Multi-Platform. And if we now go to our Android app module, open our Java package and open a main activity, we should be able to remove our surface and instead place our app composable here. Yes, that works. And if we now run this on our emulator, I will open this here. There's of course still the old version. Then we hopefully should be able to see a working example of this already on Android. Yes, it compiled. Let's wait, count is zero if we click this, cool. So on um, launching something from KMM on Android is usually um, usually comes with less problems. The tricky part is always making the same work on iOS, but let's see how we can do that. And for that, we need to go in our iOS main folder. And we can also switch to the project tab. I, I think that's a bit, bit clearer what happens. Um, so I'm gonna go to shared source iOS main. And here we also want to add this app file. And right here, we want to have something we call the main view controller, for example. That's at least how JetBrains calls that in their sample, because we now kind of need something for iOS, which is able to properly interpret our compose view to something iOS understands. And that is called the compose UI view controller. And here we get a composable um, content lambda, where we can simply call our app composable. And now we should be able to go to build and rebuild project um, and wait until that's finished. I get some errors here that always happened for me, but that uh, didn't change that I could run this on iOS. I'm not sure if the rebuild is necessary, but usually on KMM that's quite helpful to also be able to access all these iOS specific um, pieces of code in our iOS code base, which we'll jump into in a moment. Let's actually do that right now, going to our iOS app folder on this iOS app.xcode project. This is now the file we want to open in Xcode. So we can do this by right clicking, open in Xcode, and then an Xcode window will open up. I can maximize this here. And this is now our pure iOS code base where we have Swift code. But since we share our UI, we should be fine with a minimum amount of UI code here. Let's open this content view struct in this case. And right now it tells us no such module shared. That is a very common thing we see on iOS. If we use KMM, that is often changed if we simply build our iOS app, or we can simply also try to launch it. Let's do that. Also make sure to select a real device here. <clears throat> I mean, um, an emulator or simulator in iOS. I'll choose the iPhone 14 Pro, launch this here. And hopefully we don't get any issues and this error will go away. Build succeeded, that is looking good. Now my uh, simulator is launching, but we actually won't see any anything special here because we don't use our Compose view yet. We want to do this here or we actually, let's do this in a separate file by going to iOS app, um, right click, new file. We want to create a Swift file and that will be called Compose view because we now need to create a Compose view or just a Swift UI view, which is able to show composable functions. This, this is something you only need to do once and, and then you will be able to use this every time you want to display a composable from your shared code. So let's hit enter and there we go, import foundation. We also want to import Swift UI and we want to import shared, I guess. And then we can create a struct. This struct will be called compose view. So if you're new to Swift, a struct is basically um, what in Kotlin is a data class in, in Swift, at least comparable. And this needs to inherit from UI view controller representable. This will give us some functions that we need to override. On the one hand, function make UI view controller, which will return a new UI view controller, which in the end then is this um, compose view controller which we created in the shared module. So let's override this. And here we're going to return exactly that controller we uh, specified in our shared code. We can get this with app kt, that is the Kotlin file, dot main view controller. We still need to override another function here. You can see we get an error. If we click on this, we can click fix and it will add this other function that is missing, but we can simply leave this empty because it's not needed in our case. And then we can go back to content view and here in our body, this is what is currently displayed on the screen. So right now it's just default text without greeting, but we'll replace this with our compose view. 
And that's it. We now have a Swift UI view and we can launch this hopefully on our iPhone simulator. Hopefully everything goes well. Yes, that is looking good. And there we go. We have our Compose button on iOS. If we click this, then we can increase our counter, which is also perfectly reflecting here on iOS. So this is very cool. And we now effectively have something like Flutter, but with Kotlin. And the big advantage is that we still have the option to write our actual platform specific APIs in native code. So we do get that high performing app. We do get an app that scales. And we even have the option to also include platforms like desktop and web since Cotton Multi-Platform supports all these. So do you want me to make more videos about Compose Multi-Platform and also build something like a full working app? Then let me know that down below in the comments. And apart from that, thanks so much for watching. Remember to check out my Mobile Freelance Academy. First link in this video's description, at least if you're a freelancer or you want to become one. And other than that, wish you an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.